Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and the Warriors are now 29 and 7. They beat the Miami Heat at home 115 108. Let's face facts the Heat, they were down a lot of players due to injury and COVID protocols. But as I've said before, that's just the way it is. Right, The Warriors were down some guys and they lost a game. They pulled a few out. So every team is just trying to manage. And honestly, hopefully it all averages out. You know what I mean? But when there's a team that's down, you got to take advantage of them. And the Warriors did at first. But hey, credit to the Miami Heat. Those guys played hard. Eric Spolstra has those guys really, really like pushing it. And even... When Jimmy Butler went down with an injury, they kept coming, you know, they kept coming. Maybe, maybe the Warriors slacked a little bit after they started getting a comfortable lead early on. But, you know, Miami, they just kept hitting big shots, a lot of three-point shots. Right when the Warriors would get it to 10, boom, three-pointer down to seven. So the score was always fluctuating. It was good to see Kyle Guy, who was on the Warriors Summer League team, getting a stint with the Miami Heat. I like that kid. That kid can shoot and had 14 points. But this was a game that I actually had circled on the calendar for a while because, to be honest, like early on in the season, I kind of thought it was going to be the Warriors and the Miami Heat in the finals. And that could still be the case once everyone gets healthy. The Heat are a really, really good team, like a legit team. They play very cohesively. They all know their roles. They have young guys who can rise up to the moment. They have veterans like Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry who are vocal leaders and can lead by example. And they've been there and done that. They have Bam Adebayo. So who knows when it's all said and done, they might be standing there at the end. I don't think Miami could beat the Warriors, but they definitely have the kind of team that could take advantage of some of the Warriors' miscues and some of the Warriors' like turnover tendencies. And if there's any major injuries, you know, the Heat, since the beginning of the season, I've always thought they were one of the top three teams in the East, no matter what. Them, the Nets, and of course, the defending champion Bucks. So we'll see. We'll see. Both squads healthy. I like the Warriors a lot, obviously, but, you know, the Heat could definitely make a series out of it. But now looking at the Warriors, let's just start with the fact that for some reason, it looked like Steph had his powers taken away by the Monstars. I have no idea. He was one for 10 from three, three for 17 overall. He hit his two free throws and had nine points. And it might have been because he got two quick fouls. The second one was a pretty bad foul call and he went to the bench early. Maybe he lost his rhythm or whatever. But the luxury is, now that you've moved Jordan Poole to the bench in anticipation of Clay Thompson's return, you have a guy who started 28 games this season coming off the bench. Jordan Poole had 32 points on 12 of 17 and 5 of 9 from 3. I mean, damn, you know? I guess he was pretty well rested after that stint in that Boston hotel for COVID protocols. But I'm really feeling this team, and this team is obviously feeling itself a little bit. It was announced earlier today that it's likely that Clay is going to be coming back against the Cleveland Cavaliers at home on Sunday, January 9th. It was either going to be that game or the Pistons game on January 18th, because those are the next two home games. The Warriors are on the road a lot. So unless there's any crazy setbacks, we're going to see Clay soon. And you could feel that in the air on TV in Chase Center, the broadcasters were talking about it. And people are obviously starting to see what we've been talking about for months now, which is the depth of this team. I mean, with Steph shooting so terribly and you have Poole coming off the bench hitting 32, the Warriors bench scored 59 points. That's pretty damn good. So when you have Steph Curry having a bad game, but you know what he can do, you have Jordan Poole exploding off of the bench. You have Andrew Wiggins hitting his three-point shots and going eight for 13 for 22 points and really starting off games lately really, really hot. And then you have Gary Payton, who we keep saying it's uncanny. The dude does not miss at the rim in the restricted area or anything. You know, his touch off the glass is so good and he's such a quick jumper. He gets up so quickly that it's unbelievable that he's what, 6'2", 6'3". That guy is veteran savvy. I know he's 29 years old or whatever, so he's a grown-ass man, and he's worked his way to get here, but like, 
the dude executes. The dude just makes things happen on both ends, right? We see constantly, constantly how his fit on this team is like perfect. You might say fits like a glove. Yeah, corny joke. I know. So when you have all these dudes and then you have Bielitsa going four for eight and Otto Porter Jr. going two for five from three, and then you expect Clay Thompson coming back soon. I think everybody is excited about Clay coming back, and that's something that uh, you know is imminent. It's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be interesting. I've said recently, even though I know this team is going to be really good, like this version of the team we're going to see very soon with Clay, and then eventually Wiseman is something completely different. They might just steamroll people. You know, barring injury, I don't want to jinx it, but. Let's face facts. Like this team is super, super deep. And that's on the offensive end. And defensively, I mean, gosh, there's like six or seven guys who you could throw out there who would just be like an amazing defensive lineup, right? You have Draymond, you have Andrew Wiggins, you have Kavon Looney, you have Gary Payton the second, you have Jonathan Kaminga, Otto Porter Jr. is playing good D, JTA, Andre Godala, who didn't even play in this game, and then you had Clay Thompson. That's nine guys who are good defenders, you know? And then you throw in Steph, who is playing the best defense of his life. That's that's tough. That's tough. Hockey fans, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has a no-brainer offer that'll make you a winner once any shot gets past the goalie. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Throw down $1 on any NHL game and win 100 in free bets if either team scores a goal. That's promo code TBPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. This was a game that was closer than it should have been, but to be honest, it was also a game that never felt in doubt, largely because the Heat had so many players out, but with the Warriors, you just knew that eventually they would start clicking, it would just get to winning time, and they would just overwhelm Miami. And that's what happened. Andrew Wiggins <laughs> seemed like he wanted to go at Jimmy Butler, which was good. I mean, they played in Minnesota. I actually thought they had strife before, but whenever they play against each other, they seem to be joking and laughing all the time. But again, about Wiggins' three-pointer, this is a real thing, you know? I mean, we've seen it with other guys as they progress in their career, where all of a sudden there's guys who become knockdown three-point shooters. And Wiggins might be one of those guys. You know, like we're marveling now at his shooting, at his three-point percentage and holding our collective breath as to whether or not it's going to continue. But maybe this is who he is now. Maybe this is who he's becoming. And that is going to be really useful. Like I've said it before, the dude gets wide open shots. He gets wide open threes and he gets tons of dunker spot cuts, you know? I mean, yes, he has his own moves, dribble, getting past people, drop step, turn around, fadeaways, whatever. But he's getting a lot of those points really, really easily. I mean, when you think about it, like his fit in Steve Kerr's offense is better. He's a better fit overall than Harrison Barnes was. At the end, the Warriors defense did turn it on. Draymond, that guy's going to be defensive player of the year as long as he keeps this up. And he showed it. He showed why. It's good to have him back after missing a couple of games for for COVID protocols. So yeah, coming out of the holidays, you know, the Warriors, they've played well. They've played well. Since that Toronto Raptors game where they just didn't play anybody, (laughs) where they didn't play any of their better players, they've gone five and one with a bunch of guys out. And that one game was a Denver game where they played like trash and ended up down 24 points in the first half. Anyway, the Warriors, they go on the road. They play Dallas and New Orleans, two very, very gettable games. And then the Cleveland game at home on Sunday, January 9th. Vu Bang texted and said that tickets, the cheapest tickets are like 250 bucks. But I'll be enjoying that one from the front row seat of my living room couch. That's another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Pino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you get a chance, please do leave us a five-star rating on Spotify and 
Apple Podcasts and leave us a nice review too if you're so inclined. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time.